is just an informational Q&A, um, very casual for anyone who has questions about the upcoming retreat seminar. Um, so we can, you know, kind of cover the logistics and answer anything directly. Um, perfect. So on the Q&A today is Elise Frederick, who is our executive director, and then myself, Amy Garcia, who's the program coordinator for Mission Doctors. Um, to go over our mission statement just generally, and we'll give you a brief history of MDA, um, is that we're following Christ's call to heal the sick, um, and Mission Doctors Association provides life-saving medical care for the poor and training for local healthcare professionals around the world. And the training is a big thing that we put emphasis on because we're really looking for like sustainable assistance, you know, and working in partnership with the communities that we're invited to serve in. And so it's not just like a band-aid solution of providing a doctor for a couple of months, but we're trying to institute something where these communities will be able to learn from the skills provided by these doctors. Mm -hmm. Working ourselves out of a job. Exactly. That's the whole goal. <laughs> Um, exactly. At least you want to give a little sure. bit of information on yeah, the history. Absolutely. So this is Monsignor Browers, who had attended a Marian Congress in Lagos, Nigeria in 1954. And when the Congress was over, it was actually the 100th anniversary of the theology uh, around the Immaculate Conception. Um, so it, people had come from all over the world to attend that. And when it was finished, he stayed in Africa. He was the director of the propagation of the faith here in Los Angeles. He stayed back and he decided he wanted to go around the continent and find out how those of us in Los Angeles could be of service for our sisters and brothers. And he said, well, he said, when he came back, he said, well, it wasn't quite what I expected. He said, what I thought I was going to hear was Monsignor, go back to the United States and raise money so I can build a church or a school or a hospital. And he said, well, there were requests for funding, but overwhelmingly he heard three words, we need help. And so this is obviously before Vatican II. Um, so this was not at a time when the laity really had an expanded role in the church, but he shared his vision with the Holy Father. And um, it, and of course, you know, those who are a little old enough to know uh, Pope John the Twenty Third had a large vision for the role of the laity as well. And so it was well received. And so in 1955, Monsignor founded the Lay Mission Helpers Association to send the teachers, the nurses, the accountants, administrators as part of the mission office in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. But then working with the Catholic Physicians Guild in LA, he founded Mission Doctors Association four years later to send the physicians and their families and provide that same support, knowing that having a cadre of other physicians at home as part of that support would make a difference and it continues to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And so after, you know, uh, we have the two programs, we have the three-year program that has a four-month residential formation program. That's the one that Zach and Susan just completed. It begins at the end of August and runs through December. Classes in scripture, theology, Catholic social teaching. And I'll let Amy speak a bit more about that because she just went to the entire program. I did. <laughs> I just thought through it all, which was really wonderful. And we have such a variety of instructors that we get kind of from all over and a bunch of different faith backgrounds too, which is really exciting to be a part of. Um, and it really kind of focuses on three pillars, which is kind of like, uh, you know, personal development, uh, cross-cultural competence, and like spiritual development. So kind of packing a toolkit for our missionaries to take with them once they go to serve. So that way they know themselves a little bit better and they have an idea of how they interact with their culture and how that they, they might interact with this new culture and can find themselves there and being of service. We always say the best and worst thing you take with you is yourself. <laughs> so the better you know yourself, the better you are uh, equipped to, um, to serve. Mm -hmm. And then we have our short-term program, the new program. <laughs> that was founded about 26 years ago now. <laughs> Um, it's older but, than you. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, but it's a one to three month service. Um, and this is kind of what we focus on at the retreat seminar, because um, anyone who's wanting to serve short term with us, we ask them to come to the retreat seminar because we don't offer that same four month formation program. We try to still provide some sort of toolkit that they can take with them when they serve the short term mission. So that's really kind of what this Rukin retreat seminar is. Exactly. We just want to provide that information yeah. and answer questions and mm -hmm. make sure that we've had a chance to meet you and for you to meet mm -hmm. us. 
Yeah. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is our first since the in person since the COVID pandemic. It is. So it's rather exciting to bring back veteran doctors and doctors who were previously interested in serving short term, who's kind of got cut short because of COVID or yeah. anything like that. So this is exciting to cover the logistics and to invite everyone out officially again. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so just you know, for the cut and dry logistics, when it starts on Friday, March 17th in 2023, around 5 p.m., we start with a light dinner over at the Four Points Sheraton by the Los Angeles International Airport. Um, and then that night's presentations will also occur at the hotel, so we don't have to make our way to LMU. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we'll be at Loyola Marymount University. Um, and we'll end Sunday, we'll have mass in the morning, and then we'll end with an appreciation brunch um to you know finalize the weekend we have and i don't know if you've ever been over to loyola marymount they have the most beautiful chapel yeah. sacred heart chapel is just magnificent and it overlooks the whole bluff it's it's gorgeous so it's a lovely opportunity to be together uh for a mass and then come back and have a, a little brunch with members of our board of directors and uh, members of our local auxiliary as well yeah i've, I've never been on the campus of, uh... oh it's so beautiful it's yeah. so beautiful yeah, we're grateful that they let us host it there every year. <laughs> it's a nice place to be. Mm -hmm, it is. Um, and then uh, for costs, transportation, lossing, lodging, cost is free to attend and meals from Friday dinner to Sunday brunch will all be provided. Um, so you'll stay well fed. Lodging, so we set up a group rate with the Four Points by Sheraton, Los Angeles International Airport. Um, and to book in our block of reserved rooms, you will need to book by March 3rd, 2023. Um, and you can either call this number or there's a link we have for online registration that we'll send out with the email after this. And once you register for the retreat seminar, we have we do send out all that information as well. Um, and then transportation. So transportation is not provided. Fortunately, it's very close to the airport. Um, but, you know, make sure to coordinate your pickup drop off from into the airport hotel in LMU. And the hotel is also quite co close to Loyola Marymount. So also after Friday, when you meet the other doctors coming out, it'll be nice. You can probably coordinate <laughs> traveling the next morning over to Loyola Marymount. Shared Ubering. Yeah. <laughs> And then some of the topics that we'll be covering, um, we have the Theology of Mission that's going to be presented by Brother John Kiesler, who's also an MDA board member. Brother Spiritual John Kiesler, I just want to mention he's a theologian uh, yeah. at the Franciscan School of Theology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have the Spirituality of the Catholic Doctor, which will be by Dr. Tim Cavanaugh, who is an MDA veteran and board member. Um, as well as the big three, which is HIV, malaria, and tuberculosis, just some of the stuff that isn't as prevalent here, but is often prevalent in missions. <laughs> um, and that's by Dr. Martha Franz de Leon, uh, who's also an MDA veteran and board member. Um, and then we'll have the opportunities for service. This year we'll be presenting on the mission sites that are available for short-term service. One of the things that we like to do is generally send our short-term doctors to places where a long-term doctor is already in place. So that way they kind of have a guide with the local culture and the hospital, and they have someone who can show them where they're going to be of most use and helpful, you know, to kind of guide them. So Roy and Melanie Elfrank have served in several different places with us. Um, and they've also recently kind of scouted some of our other sites in Uganda and Ghana um, so they have a great idea of, you know, all the places there are to serve. And this gives the opportunity, you know, to kind of showcase those places that, you know, need assistance of, and have invited doctors of ours. In. Um, and then we have a presentation by Elise for good intentions and bad outcomes. Elise, do you want to talk a little bit more? About that is that? honestly just the, you know, it, I think that uh, Tim Cavanaugh and his wife, before they went to Zimbabwe, he said, I would really like to get through the three years that we serve without any rule associated with our names. <laughs> and what it is, is, you know, honestly, people have good intentions, but they do make mistakes. And we learn from every mistake as an organization. And so we want to be able to, you know, say we, we recognize the needs are great. People will ask for uh, assistance with um, funding, you know, school. And we tell people that's that's not something we can do. We, we advise people never to give money to individuals. If you have the means to support, 
do it anonymously through the church or through the hospital, through the religious that run the hospital, never give funds directly. You change the relationship dynamically and then it ruins it for all other people coming. We had one doctor who went to Cameroon and he said, all the kids keep coming up to me and going, baun, baun, ba. I don't know what it means. And somebody said, well, it's because somebody came here five years ago and handed it out balloons. And he said, so every time they see someone who isn't Cameroonian, they come up to them and they go, ba un, ba un, ba un. So <laughs> it can be something as simple as that, that can change the relationship. It's like, all these people are not nice. The people who brought balloons were nice. Why, <laughs> why don't you bring? And people think it's just a simple thing. I'll bring hard candy. I'll share it with the kids. It's like, please, you know. And so we, we tell people, I have broad shoulders. You can always blame it on the organization. I'm sorry, my organization doesn't allow me to do that. Amy has broad shoulders. She's willing to take that responsibility as well. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, we will primarily want you to share your skills, your gifts, you know, um, your willingness to serve. Um, so that's really what our focus <laughs> is. Um, and then for the one of the final presentations, I'll be covering the logistics of service. So any questions relating to visas, passports, travel, insurance, all those kinds of things, things that maybe um, doctors don't think about when they just think about wanting to serve, but we as an organization think a lot about <laughs> so <laughs> those sorts of things will be covered as well. Sure. And then we provide some resources. We mm -hmm. have a travel agency that mm -hmm. we work with that has a missionary fair. And additionally, they have um, the ability for people to bring extra bags because, you know, if you're going under a missionary uh, 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 ticket, you usually get additional things to bring. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, that's an advantage. Yeah. All right. And then this is the Q&A part. Um, so we did have some previously submitted questions. Um, so I feel like Elise can tackle Absolutely. some of these. <laughs> I would be so, happy to. This is something we have, you know, so over the years, you know, people like, oh, what I want to serve. And even people like yourself, Crystal, who've done international service, they're like, but I've done this before. Why do I need to come out to LA? Or why do I need, when we were doing this in mm -hmm. Chicago too, it's like, why do we need to do this? I've already done international service. Like, well, we do it a little differently. You know, um, we have a different model of mission and our service is to go and support the healthcare that is provided by the Catholic church. So sometimes that means you are serving without all the resources you need. And there is, um, we had one, one doctor, Kate Bolton, who always said, there's a grace in that. There's a grace in that, that, that I can learn and I can come back to the States and, and, and I will have improved the care I can provide. Mm -hmm. But additionally, I need to recognize that when I leave, if I have brought something that I could, can only be used while I'm there, that doesn't benefit anybody. So um, our goal is to spend that time with everyone who's come to the retreat just to share these things. But additionally, oh, it's over the meals. I think people really enjoy the opportunity to speak with other doctors over the meals to find out about their service, what the sites are like, and it gives them that chance as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, you know, associating with other veterans and, you know, exchanging tips and stories and learning from things that other people have had to learn potentially the hard way is really cool. <laughs> we, um, all, we all learn things the hard way. <laughs> we, we've got to pass it on so the next person yeah. doesn't have to do it quite as hard. Exactly. And the other um, one is, you know, do, uh, if I have an interest in, in a few years, should I attend the retreat seminar now? Um, you know, we tell people it's a good, people have attended many of them. People we've had, I think it's, uh, um, one of our doctors has attended at least four of them. And he served in Cameroon. He came back, attended again. Uh, it, we generally say, if you don't have an intention to serve, you know, like for the next five years, you know, you can, you can hold off and come, you know, just before you're going to serve. But this is also a chance to kind of get the idea, kind of get a better idea of what the organization is and kind of focus, you know, how you might be planning to serve. So come to this retreat and then, uh, you know, if you're thinking about going at another time, you know, we can talk about it. We we won't won't require that you attend again, you know, unless it's been like 10 years, but it's uh, probably a good idea to, you know, to go close to a mission, a, a opportunity to serve. Yeah. And there are definitely opportunities for dentistry mm -hmm. and ophthalmology. There definitely are. In fact, uh, we have a dentist who's going to be going out to Uganda in April and um, pediatrician going to uh, Peru in uh, June, in June. So yes, uh, specialties are always needed. 
And the nice thing is, is that when they know a specialist is coming, they are very often able to line up cases. And, you know, while for a dentist, a lot of times the, um, the resources are somewhat limited. And so sometimes dentists do bring some equipment with them. But for the most part, an ophthalmologist who approaches mission doctors and says, I'd like to serve as an ophthalmologist. Well, we have just the site for you. We have a location that has a full ophthalmology setup. So, you know, we will work with specialists to ensure that the equipment and the resources are in place for them to serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's part of the reason, you know, we generally send where long-term doctors are as well, because they'll be there in place and they'll be able to communicate with any short-term doctors coming, you know, what things might be limiting, what resources are available. So that's always nice to have someone on the ground. It does. And sometimes it's not, a, sometimes it might be a lay mission helper and yeah. not a mission doctor because our sister mm -hmm. program, lay mission helpers, there might be a lay mission helper in place um, mm -hmm. at the, at the at a adjacent school or hospital that can also be a host for yeah. a, a short-term mission doctor. Okay, now it's time for any open Q&A. Crystal, I don't know if you have any questions or at least any sprung up to you <laughs> as we're going through. Yeah. Yeah. We'll ask Crystal uh, first. Yeah, so uh, about how many usually attend the retreat? Is it just kind of variable or? It's very variable, very, very. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could see that the group there, we had like, I think that was 25 or 30 doctors attended. That was one in Chicago. That was uh, that was a big one. So, you know, I would say as, you know, that was average uh, for pre-COVID, you know, and then, so we have no idea what's going to happen with our first one post-COVID. So we're all kind of um, going, all right, Lord, yeah. <laughs> you're in charge. <laughs> we're we're going to go ahead and schedule it. And, and uh, I remember the first one we did in 1997, we did this at a retreat house in Los Angeles. And the president of the board at the time, God rest his soul, Dr. Tim Lefebvre. And he said, well, if we build it, they will come. <laughs> so, so, you know, we just schedule it and we'll see, we'll see what we do know. Another doc, we don't, we know, but a couple of few other doctors, I mean, we have like 12 doctors already signed up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, so yes, quite a few people have signed up already, but mm -hmm. perhaps they're ready um, to ask all their questions till they get there. <laughs> Uh, and I, I was just wondering, um, and this may be touch obviously on the retreat in the retreat, sure, sure. Um, but how is it decided for a short term assignment, whether you go one or two or three months or that kind of a thing? That's that is a great question. And and even the location, even what, where, location. what location do you go to? So we and work, exactly. So we work with you to to say you have a preference, say, oh, where I would really like to serve is um, Honduras. And, but I'm a surgeon. And it's like, well, they don't need surgeons at the places we work in Honduras. So um, we, you know, we will try to match your skills with the needs at the location. So that would be a primary first step, right? So somebody has a skill and they have a preference and then we'll say, well, but so this is a good location. An ophthalmologist would say in Ghana, they have a full ophthalmology setup. This would be a good location for you there. They train ophthalmologists here. So um, this would be a, a great place. They'd love to have an ophthalmologist there. So um, we work, that's step one, your, your desire and then match it to the needs of the location. You also express to us, I am available to serve for a month. I am available to serve for two months. I'm available to serve for three months. We don't recommend serving longer than that. Sometimes it's visa issue. <laughs> Sometimes it's the fact that we have only had an opportunity to give you resources on a weekend. And we think that people who are going longer than that need need greater support, need greater resources. And so we really believe in the training. We really believe in that four months training for people who are going to go for an extended period of time. You know, kind of like packing your backpack with all your personal, you know, with prayer life, in, in, in increasing your prayer life, increasing self-awareness and, and, and those things. So um, we believe that, you know, people can manage it for three months, um, even if they have not uh, had the longer program. So that would be that reason. But but we always tell people at this weekend, we say it takes three to six months out to plan it. Mm -hmm. So if you are coming in March and you're interested in serving in June, that's a good, you know, a good three months out, so June, July. It, it, it's difficult to do it shorter than that because, you know, the the issues with making those arrangements with the with the site and your own issues with, you know, uh, letting your, you know, letting your job, as we always tell people, give us a three to six month window of when you would like to serve. So 
you know, very often people who've, you know, already served with us short term, they'll get a hold of us and say, well, I'm going to be free in November. And, um, you know, do you need me in Uganda? And it's like, yes. And we'll, because once you've served with us and, you know, had a success, we just match you up again. So, um, you know, you just call us and let us know I'm available to serve. Um, in, and mostly we find people go back to the same location. I mean, like Dr. Lou Coda um, has been going, he and his, well, they served long-term originally in Papua New Guinea when their children were little, but, um, you know, he's gone back, I think, seven years in a row for three to four months in um, Uganda. And he just recently sent us a video about the transformational changes that have happened in at the hospital he's been going to every year. My goodness, the changes since he was there. Uh, because he makes a little incremental change each time he goes. And now the, the way they're able to provide care for the tiniest babies, it's just remarkable. Incrementally, you know, it was just a little bit at a time. Because he doesn't go in like, you know, I use the expression grant taking Richmond. And I, I I said that to somebody younger and they didn't know what I meant. But it was, it was like, you know, it's just it's it's a euphemism. It means, you know, <laughs> don't go in like, you know, taking charge. But um, so I think that that's an important thing. It's like going in to work with people. And ultimately, when you work with people, they listen to you better. They they'll they receive information better. They they'll be happier to listen to what you have to share. Yeah, I think there is an advantage when you can go back to the same place multiple yeah. times, which I, I have done that in Honduras. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've gone there three times in the past and they you form relationships with people that it's way. True. It's true. Where do you go in Honduras? Where have you been in Honduras? Uh, Tegucigalpa. So, okay. Okay. Um, and I know, uh, I, get, I guess the mission site you're speaking of in Honduras, is it more the, on the coast, I believe? It's, uh, it's NPH. It's what, that's where we have one couple. And then uh, okay. we're ex ex looking at another one. We're looking at, the, that is on the coast, isn't it? Mm -hmm. where, the, where the friars of the friars of the renewal are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. Um, how is it for the site, the different sites? Uh, is the accommodations are different depending on where you, where you are? They're so similar. It's, it's interesting. There's, you know, we, there's an expert, we talk about mission furniture here, right? So it actually looks the same. I mean, from when we served, my husband and I served in Thailand with our kids and, you know, the furniture is wood and it's got straight arms. And then I go to Cameroon and it's like, they look exactly the same. <laughs> it's a, so there is a style of furniture and mostly the houses are built of cinder block. Mm -hmm. um, and they have screens and, uh, you know, running water is generally the case. Uh, reliable electricity is generally the case. Reliable internet is generally the case, but, you know, given, um, circumstances, uh, that are sometimes beyond the location's control. I've been in locations where the electricity was on till 10 o'clock at night, and then they shut it off for a few hours, mm -hmm. um, because they were running on mostly on, uh, generators. But, um, for the most part, um, you're able to communicate, um, even if you're using a phone, you know, the local phone, get a local phone for internet service. And uh, WhatsApp is by far the easiest way to communicate with home. Uh, <laughs> Chris goes, yes. Yeah, there, there is nothing easier or more effective at, for even for phone calls, even for phone calls. Right. It's wonderful. Right. So we, we've come a long way from 1977 when my husband and I were in Thailand. Um, and uh, we were using those blue aerogram letters, you know, uh, the, the ones that if you wrote too hard, your your pen went through it. So, <laughs> yeah. So we've come a long way and it makes communication a lot easier. One of the things that we've, we've added is uh, for the long-term program is we have something called the James Carey Fund. And this was one of our early mission doctors. And it's to help to assist um, the young doctors who have loan repayment. And so it's to assist them with their loan repayment while they're serving long term. So that's the James Carey Fund. And then this past year, our board of directors has decided to make available to those who are serving long term um, the resources to come home at 18 months for a, a home stay, for a, a trip home, because not everybody has the resources for it. I mean, you know, everybody, you know, a lot of people will make a trip home, you know, halfway through. But for some people, they don't have the resources for that. And so our board has decided to make that um, available. And, and that's what we work for. That's what we work for as an organization is to be able to lift any block to service. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, I think that's, I can't really think of anything. Well, I'm if you sure do, we have a whole weekend. We have a whole weekend to answer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm sure lots of questions will be asked over the weekend. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. And it's and it's just a it's a it's a great opportunity to just be together with other with like minded Catholic physicians and uh, and others who are are interested in the same things. Yes. Well, I'm I'm excited for the weekend. Great. Well, we're yeah. excited you could be with us, Crystal. We really are. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And thanks for attending and giving us your questions. But if you have any other ones before the weekend, you can, of course, always email me. Okay, will do. Great. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you on St. Patrick's Day. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll see you in March. Okay, see you then. Okay, God bless. Uh, you too.